Hey guys, my name's Damien Senior. I'm the creator and designer of Heroes of the Shire. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching our tutorial for Tabletopia. So, let's begin. When you guys load up Tabletopia, what you'll see is a selection of five characters. Um, I'm currently in the blue seat. Let me leave this seat. So you guys can see that we have five seats at the top. We've got a white seat, yellow, blue, purple, and red. Okay, so starting with the white seat, we have the cleric character. You can see this lovely lady here, typical RPG character cleric, great healer. Going around clockwise, we have in the yellow seat the paladin character, um, sort of a holy warrior. Going over to the blue character we have the hunter uses her pets to defeat her enemies in battle we then have the berserker this is in the purple seat berserker likes to take a lot of damage to increase his power so uh, he attacks quite heavily and then last but not least we have the warrior in the red seat over here so just starting out just pick a character based on the artwork based on your sort of rpg character favorite types and, and just go from there okay just heading over to my my seat i'll take the the blue seat this hunter character um there's lots of stuff to look at let's have a quick look at our character board first you'll notice in the middle here overlapping the artwork we have our character stats so my hunter has a strength value of six, as you can see here, intellect value of three. She has an agility value of eight, defense of four, and a health of 35. If we come off the board, you'll notice that all the health dice in this top left-hand corner, where our health points are supposed to be, are already set to the correct value. So this hunter, 35. All the characters are set to the, to the correct value, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. So... We have 10 circles down here. You'll notice on the left-hand side we have a support row. And we also have an attack row. Okay, so the support row is these first five spells across the top. Okay, so we've got Inner Beast, Revive, Pet, Horn of Agility, Marksmanship, and Summon Wolves. These are all our support spells. And the bottom five are our attacking spells. We have Hunter, Strike, Multi-Shot, Long Shot, Piercing Shot, and Double Shot. Okay. To cast the spell, what we would do is take one of our die, which are over here. I'm going to pop it on Inner Beast. What number do I pop it on? That's represented here with this CD in the bottom right-hand corner, which stands for cooldown. That means how long I have to wait to recast this spell. So in the case of our Inner Beast, it's got a cooldown of four turns. So I'll place a dice over the top here for four, just reminding myself that it gives one ally plus three strength for three turns. Okay. So what I would do here is grab a plus three from the table. And where would I place that? Okay, so it's plus three, strength for three turns. So it's not a permanent buff. So it won't go in any of these columns here because this is all for our permanent buffs. It would go in our temporary buff section. Uh, it's under strength, so we'll follow this column here. And it's a three turn. So we go over here for, for three turns. Okay, this row here is for three turns, or should I say this column? This column here is for two turns, and this column here is for one turn. We'll talk about how we finish our turns and start our turns in a moment, but let's just go back to our spells. So, Inner Beast has one little green stick man. That little green stick man means it targets one ally. So I could have target myself or an ally with that plus three strength ability. I chose to target myself, hence why I put that plus three strength on myself. The three little green men over here on Horn of Agility. This would give the buff to all allies. That includes yourself. Okay. When we go down to our attack spells at the bottom here, you'll notice that you have the exact same thing, but enemy is represented with red so multi shot three red enemies means all enemies and one stick man means one enemy okay so this is how we target players or allies 
in Heroes of the Shire. The cooldown it represents the dice that we pop over the top. Okay. The reason why I've put a token and a dice on is to show you guys what would happen at the beginning of our turn. We would have a dice upkeep, we have a token upkeep, we have a hero's ability, followed by a main phase and an end phase. Um, during your very first turn, most of those phases are actually skipped because there's no dice and there's no tokens on the board. So I've just quickly popped a dice and a token on here to, to show you guys what would happen at the beginning of my turn. So if I'm playing the hunter character, at the beginning of my turn I would have my token upkeep. My token upkeep is where I shimmy across all my tokens one column to the left. So my plus three strength, which is lasting three turns, now moves to one turn. I don't have any other tokens, so my token upkeep finishes. I then go to my dice upkeep. So I reduce the value of all my die by one. So my cooldown of four now reduces to three. So I'll be able to cast Inner Beast again in another three more turns. Then it goes to my main phase. My main phase is what I sort of cheated out earlier by casting that Inner Beast. So the main phase is where I would cast another spell. Okay, so I would take my cooldown die. I would place it on uh, multi-shot if I choose to cast that. Pop it on a value of two. And I would announce to my enemies, because this targets all enemies. And I'm going to be dealing two damage. Okay. But what we need to look at is what's outside these circles now. So you can see here we have a little bow. This bow and arrow represents that it's a ranged attack. And you can see my hunter's strike over here to the left. I have a little sword, which represents it's a melee attack. Okay, so we only have ranged and melee attacks in Heroes of the Shire. Top right hand side, we have our attack modifier. So plus STR is short for strength and INT on Hunter Strike is short for intellect. So multi-shot targets all enemies for two damage plus strength. So it's plus my strength. My character strength is six, but I have a plus three buff at the moment. So it's actually nine. So two damage plus my strength, which is 9, is 11 damage. So I'd announce to my enemies that I'm going to hit them for 11 damage. Then the enemies turn, taking the damage. If 11 damage was incoming to the hunter, we have a defense value here of 4. The math, nice and simple, 11 minus 4 equals 7. I would deduct 7 health points from my health points dice um, over here. So I'd go down to 28 that would be then the end of the hunter's main phase after the hunter would have cast multi-shot showing you the damage there was just if somebody was hitting us okay the end phase is where any abilities trigger that say at the end of your turn you gain x y or z um, in the hunter's scenario here we don't actually have any so the turn would be passed to the next player now getting on to turn order who goes first who goes last um, we have our character's agility value. So the hunter has an agility value of eight. If I come over to the paladin's board over here, we have a quick look at the paladin's board and see that the hunter, uh, sorry, the paladin has an agility value of five, meaning that the hunter would go before the paladin because his agility, sorry, her agility is actually eight instead of the, the Paladin, which is five. Uh, when we're playing with sort of four or five players, remembering who's got the highest agility can be uh, quite difficult. So what each character has here above their artwork is a little character token. At the beginning of the game, as stated in the rule book, what we would do is take this little token and we would come over to this turn order card on the table and we place our character's tokens in order of who goes first, who goes second, who goes third. So I'll take my hunter token over to here. I should have uh, saved a few more camera angles so I can get around this board a bit faster. <laughs> so each round you guys can see if it's a one versus one hunter versus the paladin, we would have the hunter always going first followed by the paladin. Unless the paladin has uh, sorry the paladin has any spells to adjust his agility value, should his agility ever go above eight points, which would swap these guys over if the paladin has a higher intellect value. Okay. Going back to our hunter's board. 
during arena mode, which is the only mode we have on Tabletopia at the moment, you'll very rarely use this permanent buff section. This permanent buff is predominantly for our story mode when we're equipping items, um, loot items to our equipment boards and action cards sort of giving permanent buffs. Um, a few characters do offer permanent buffs, but the majority of buffs uh, cast from spells and abilities during arena mode are all temporary. So we'll be using these three columns here. Remembering column on the far right is column three, then column two, and then column one. Okay, so that's that's pretty much your spells. Um, we also have on Horn of Agility here, on the top right hand side of the spell, we have a little dice followed by a little symbol. Okay, this dice means that we would roll the conditions die and what we're looking to roll is this little symbol here which is the dodge symbol. Okay, to remind yourselves of what these little symbols mean, each character has a reference card. Okay, you can just have a quick look at any of these abilities these little symbols on your reference card, as you can see that there's no dodge ability there. You can actually flip this card and uh, there's another set of symbols on the back. These little icons and dodge here is a condition that says you roll a die. If you roll a five or a six, you dodge the attack. Okay, so after casting Horn of Agility, the hunter would also roll the conditions die, which is in the middle of the table over here. We've got a little conditions die. Uh, we'd give that a roll. That wasn't a very good roll table, Tokyo. Come on, show us. That's better. <laughs> so it landed on the hex. So unfortunately, we didn't land on this symbol. So we do not add the dodge ability to the spell. Okay. There's very little dice rolling um, of these abilities in arena mode. The reason being is we don't want too much randomness. We would like the arena mode to be quite competitive and, and based on skill more so than randomness. These little die you will find on a lot of bosses. So during scenario mode, um, the bosses have a few more dice on some of their spells to add burn to the fire dungeon or add frozen to the, to the snow dungeon, uh, snow scenario, should I say, for example. Okay. The hunter's ability on the left hand side, underneath the health points, you'll see here that uh, we have a loyal companion ability and it states, on your first turn summon a pet to fight alongside you. You can choose from the bear, the bird or the snake. Once chosen, add the selected pet card to your ability tab. Choose wisely as you cannot change your pet during battle. So each character has their own unique ability. The hunter's ability allows them to summon a pet. We head over to the paladin over here. Paladin actually has two abilities, Divine Aura. All allies start with an extra four health points, so that's of course fantastic for team play. And then we have Refraction, light damage spells, all grant plus one damage for you and your allies. Let's have a quick look at, over here at the Cleric's ability, her ability, group prayer, all allies gain one HP, which is short for health points at the beginning of their turn. Okay, so each character has a nice unique ability to make the gameplay um, really different for each character. And looking over here at the Spell Mastery board, what is it and should you be using it? Um, if you've played the game a couple of times, I'd highly recommend using these Spell Mastery boards, but if this is your first time watching this tutorial and uh, playing Heroes of the Shire, it might be wise to just sort of skip it for the time being. Um, because what it does is it gives our character an additional five spells or abilities, which of course, when you're new to the game, can just be a little bit overwhelming uh, from our experience. So let's have a quick look at the Spell Mastery Board. Spell Mastery Boards are split into three columns. On the left-hand side, this little brown column here is called Swordsmanship. And it's all five of these spells or abilities down the left-hand side. In the middle, we have Arrow Specialization, this blue column all five of these and then on the right hand side we have advanced companions which is this green column on the right hand side here okay so in arena mode all characters start at level five what that means is that you have five of these little cubes to pick five of these spells or abilities on your spell mastery board to enhance the sort of the depth of play okay it's like a talent tree in other 
sort of RPG games. Um, we call them spell mastery boards in Heroes of the Shire. So just think of it like a family tree. You can't do the following. We can't take our dice and select this bottom ability here, followed by this bottom ability here. Reason being is we have to be connected like a tree to all the spells or abilities above. Okay, so we only have five cubes. Some tips for new players. I would select one path. If we, uh, with the hunter, we choose swordsmanship path. I would take all five of these cubes, pop them on these little squares here. Um, in the printed version of the game, these little squares will be sort of cut into the board so these cubes will sit nicely into the boards where they can't move. Okay, so this reminds yourself that you have these additional five spells or abilities and also shows your enemy what path you've chosen on your spell mastery board. So, of course, they can base their tactics on what they can see. Okay, what's the difference between a spell and ability? So if we have a quick look at our swordsmanship over here, anything inside a circle. So we have these three in the middle, double edge, sharpen, steel and defensive parry. These three are spells. OK, because they're inside a circle and then we have swordsmanship. Uh, sorry, no, we have sword master and we have cutthroat down the bottom. These that are just inside the boxes with no circles are abilities. And the difference is spells, you can cast them. Abilities are sort of static abilities that you need to sort of remember. So you can see here, swordsmaster, all your melee attacks gain an additional plus one strength. So that's just sort of remembering that if you were to cast double edge, because it's a melee attack here, or defensive parry, because it's a melee attack here, or if we were to cast hunter's strike, because it's a melee attack here, that you would have an additional plus one damage, or plus one strength added to that spell. Okay, same for our cutthroat ability down here. All your melee attacks now grant a bleed effect. So um, those are not things that you cast, those are things that you just sort of remember. Um, uh, passive abilities, static abilities that are added or subtracted from, from your play. Okay, these three spells here are just like, imagine they're an extension of your main character's board over here. You can cast those at any point by placing your cooldown die on them. Okay. We're almost there, guys. What you'll notice is that each character has a shield token above their health points. Now, um, in this chosen character for the tutorial the hunter the hunter doesn't actually have any ability or spell to give herself a shield so she won't actually be using that but if i head over to the paladin over here the paladin has a spell over here called celestial shield so he grants one ally an eight hp shield and plus one defense for three turns so if the paladin was to cast celestial shield and target himself with the eight hp shield what you would do is you take a die you take a die and you'd place it on the shield for a value of eight. Okay. So if I quickly do that for you. We've got a six and a two. There are a couple of D20s on the board as well. So it might have been easier in this scenario to grab a D20. So we now have a value of eight on our shield. Okay. So should we be attacked any incoming damage now, we deduct it from our shield before our health points die. And this is important and can be quite tactical because characters, if we have a look at the cleric, characters cannot heal or gain any health above their starting health. So the cleric starts at 36 health points. So on her first turn, it would be useless for her to, to heal herself unless, of course, she'd already been hit by somebody with a higher agility value. But if she has her turn one, she goes first, she's already at full health. There's no point in healing because she can't gain above 36. But of course, she could cast a spell that would grant her a shield. So placing a shield on a character is kind of like healing above your, your base health points. Okay. If this was the very first turn of the Hunter, our ability over here, Loyal Companion, allows us to add a bear, snake or bird card to our ability tab. So what I would do is choose the bear card. And the ability tab is this little black arch over here on the left hand side of the board. So I'm going to take my bear card. I'm going to pop my bear on my ability tab over here. Now, once a card is on the ability tab, it's active and it's in play. OK, so the bear being a pet um, tells us here um, on this little flag that it's a pet. Pets are just like 
player boards where they have their own turns, they have their own spells and their own stats. If we have a quick look at the bear. In the middle you can see a strength, intellect, agility, defense. And we have two spells here. Okay, so because the bear would take his own turn, we would also take one of these character tokens and we would go and place that over here on the turn order board. Now I know the bear has an agility value of three. Placing the bear last in the turn order based on the current state of the agility. Okay. Once the bear ha casts their spell, you would also place a cooldown die over the top. And of course the bear or any pet, they also have their own um, dice upkeep. So when you're first playing, just remember that the bear is its own separate character or any pet is their own separate character. So don't remove their dice, or should I say, don't, um, during the dice upkeep of the hunter's phase, deduct the value of the die on the bear. That would happen on the bear's own dice upkeep. Okay. Pretty much there, guys. So you'll just notice that um, there's the odd spell or two here, like double strike. Uh, this is a split spell. It reads from the left to the right. So we always resolve the spell on the left first before we cast the spell on the right. Now double strike, nice and easy. It does the exact same thing twice. So it would target one enemy, the little red stick man, for two damage. The strength modifier over here, so it's two plus our strength. Right now our strength is six plus the three is nine. So we'd now it's an attack again. Nine plus the two of eleven to one target enemy. Once they've deducted the damage, then we would then announce we can choose another enemy if we like. It's just as long as we target one enemy. Okay, for 11 damage again. Okay, during play, it's one spell per turn. Unless your spell specifically says that you can cast another spell this turn. If we have a quick look at marksmanship here. It says the next spell you cast grants. This little symbol is not back. So your next spell grants knockback and it deals an additional 50% more damage. You can cast another spell. So if we cast Marksmanship, we can then cast another spell this turn, allowing us to cast two spells per turn. Not many characters can do that, but um, but quite a few can. About, about four or five out of, the, out of the 21 characters will allow you to cast maybe more than one spell per turn. Okay, what you'll guys find is in the middle of the board, these are all the sort of the pluses and the negatives or the numbers. Uh, these are all the conditions. You'll find these on some of the spells. And we have this bounty token in the middle of the table, this sort of little monster target. What the bounty is for is the person or the player with the highest health points to start with. Um, in this scenario, if I'm playing against the Paladin, Paladin is already on 40 health. Uh, we're already down to 28, so the Paladin would have the Bounty token. Okay, any player that attacks the player with the Bounty token will receive, um, re receive an additional two health points after they have cast an attacking spell. It's just to try to incentivize players to attack the person with the Bounty to ensure that People don't just team up or gang up on one player and sort of all three people hit the same player each turn. There's not much fun in that. So there's an incentive to attack the player with a bounty by gaining a little bit of health each time you attack the player with a bounty. So one other thing to touch on, guys, is... Um, it's moving cards in and out of our ability tab. So if we're looking at the hunter's board here, uh, sorry, the, the warrior's board here, uh, should the warrior dip into defensive stance and let's say he casts a defensive hold and pops a cooldown die of a value of five on this stance here. And then at the beginning of his turn, he changes stance and moves this, uh, let me just actually pop the dice on so you guys can, can visualize it a little bit easier. So we've got that dice on there of five. It goes to the beginning of our turn, we take our token upkeep, we take our dice upkeep, join our dice upkeep, we would drop that down to four. Okay, and then as I decided to change stance, for example, I move this card away, pop this card down in, then I decide to come into brawl stance. Then at the beginning of my next turn, you still would deduct this dice during your dice upkeep. Okay, so the dice doesn't get removed 
um, just to ensure that you can't cast some of these powerful, powerful spells by just going in and out of stances all the time, that you still do have to wait the full cooldown length um, of the stances, because stances, like certain totems and, and other cards, you can just keep changing each turn. Um, one last thing I believe to, to pick up on, guys, is some percentages. So if I go back over to my Hunter, and my Hunter, if we recall earlier, when I um, spoke about Marksmanship, it deals 50% more damage, and I can cast another spell on this turn. So should I be cast a Piercing Shot? We can see underneath Piercing Shot here, it does 2 damage plus pierce, we'll, we don't need to know what pierce does for now, but I have a plus strength modifier, so going back to my strength, it's 6 plus 3 is 9, plus the 2 from the piercing shot, so it's a total of 11 damage again, so your natural instinct is to go 50% straight away of 11, of course that's 5.5, rounded up as we always round up, and here's the should be 6 so it'd be 11 plus 6 is 17 uh, unfortunately that is not the correct way of adding percentages in Heroes of the Shire so what we do is we add the percentage of extra damage or deduction of damage um, off the final number that's going to hit the opponent so if we announced our 11 damage to our paladin over here our Paladin has a defense value of 5, 11 minus the 5 is 6, 6, going back over to our Hunter, is then 50% more of that final number, which is now 6, so of course that would be 3, 6 plus 3 the Paladin would take a total of 9 damage. What we do recommend is if any player during the game is announcing damage of more than sort of 25 to 30 points of damage in one attack, maybe just question your friends' um, math, and, math and how they got to that number, because the chances are they've potentially doubled or tripled their numbers incorrectly and it's easy to do especially on the the cleric's board here she has a spell called flash um it gains a hundred percent more damage if the the cleric has an intellect buff so common mistake is there to just immediately just double the damage so unfortunately it's not doubled the damage it's um it's something we've had to iron out during our playtesting because that is originally how it was designed, but the the damage was was insane, and we're able to kill people in sort of two or three hits, meaning uh, the games were over extremely fast. So we've um, we've devised a few different systems, and in, in, at what stage we add the percentages, and and this is how we've concluded, and this is the the, fa the fairest option. So just remember, any percentages, either deductions or increases in damage. Uh, they come off the final number that is to hit the enemy. Okay. So, here we go, guys. Um, I think that's covered pretty much everything. Um, I mean, having a quick look here at the beer, actually. Um, what I did forget to do earlier is take my D20 dice when the beer came into play, and I would pop that on top of the artwork to represent the beer's health points. Okay. I mean, and that pretty much concludes us so once again thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video um, you've got the full PDF attached to Tabletopia hopefully you'll be able to make some sense of it guys um, this is our first ever uh, game that we're hoping to publish next year via Kickstarter so we appreciate the support we appreciate you guys taking the time to test the game give it a play um, we'd love to know your feedback um, positive or negative so just uh, get in touch with with us on social media and that would be grand thank you very much